welcome to First Christian Church of Lansing. Whether you're joining us here in person or joining us online, we are so glad that you are spending this sunshiny morning with us. And how appropriate that the sun is so bright and shining today because we are going to be celebrating God's creation in the, in the form of Earth Day, um, which is tomorrow, and also the fact that it's Camp Sunday where we get to celebrate all things Camp Crystal. Um, as I was driving here today, the Grand River was like sparkling and there was people out there boating and I was like, oh, what a perfect way to start the morning. So <laughs> a few housekeeping things. Um, we do offer communion every single week here at First Christian Church and if you're joining us online, you can absolutely partake in communion at home as well. If you're here in person, we offer it by intinction, which means that you can come forward, take a piece of bread, and dip it into the cup. But if you would rather have your own individual serving, if you remain seating, seated, um, a deacon will bring that to you as well. If you need a gluten-free option, we've got you covered too. Out in the narthex, by the bulletins, we've got gluten-free individual cups out there. By the main doors that some of our youth are walking in right now, we have an offering plate that is not only where you can leave your offerings, but it's also where you can put your prayer requests if you have them. If you need to write one down, there's yellow cards in the back of your pews. Um, leave that in that uh, offering plate, and we collect those to be read at prayer time. If you're joining us online, we don't want to forget about you at home as well, so write those prayer requests in the feed of this um, broadcast. We write those down for you so we can pray for all of you who are worshiping with us from the comforts of their own home as well. All right. That was a lot. I think I got through it all. So let's celebrate with some camp-inspired music this we um, weekend and stand and sing, Lord, I lift your name on high, followed by Sanctuary. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
Our first scripture today is uh, Job 38, 4 through 14 and 18a. (laughs) Thank you. Where were you when I created the earth? If If you know the answer, tell me. Who decided its size? Do you know? Who stretched the measuring line across it? Into what foundation were its pillars sunk? Who laid the cornerstone while all the choruses of morning stars sang and the heavenly court shouted for joy? And who held back the sea behind partitions when it burst forth from my womb, when I created clouds as the earth's raiment and thick darkness as its swaddling clothes, when I drew limits around the waters and locked the partitions in place and said, this far and no more, this is where your mighty waves stay. Have you ever in your life commanded the morning or told the dawn that its assignment for the day was to grasp the edges of the earth and shake out its wicked? When the dawn lightens things to a clay red, like a garment dyed to a brighter color, do you comprehend the breadth of the earth? Okay, I need the kids up here. I know, this is kind of breaking from what we've been used to, right? Okay, so I have a question. Who all here has been camping? Okay, so who all here has been to a summer camp? Okay, so there's a common denominator. Have you all been to a pretty great place called... Camp Crystal? Yeah. yeah. So I have not asked the kids and to prepare for this before time because I, I always like the spontaneous. So I want you to take a minute, and I want you, not even a minute, like 10 seconds because that's all it'll take you, to think about one word, just one word that describes how you feel about Camp Crystal. Whoa. It took Lucy one second. Okay. Well, you can talk about what you like about being outside in nature. How's that sound? Okay. So, Audrey? Fun. Fun. Weird people. That's two words. So, come up with another one. Weird. Weird. Okay. Is that because you're there? (laughs) Just tease that. And it's cool to be weird. Amazing. Amazing. Do you have one, Wendy? Okay. What do you like about being outside? Fun. Fun. Peaceful. Peaceful. So I would I would use the word community to describe my experience at Camp Crystal. And one of the things that's super fun about Camp Crystal is we all know some of these songs, but there's a fan favorite song that even back in my day and So we used to have to do this anytime we got mail. I don't know if that's still the rule. Just all the time. No. no. So what song do we think this is? Gray Squirrel. Gray Squirrel. So young and old alike, we are going to sing Gray Squirrel. So if you would like to come up here, please come up and join me. Yes, young and old alike. Anybody else? You want to swish your bushy tail? Okay. Okay, are we ready? Okay. What are we doing? Will people still be able to hear it on? Okay, we'll hold it out like this. Okay, ready? Gray squirrel, gray squirrel, swish your bushy tail. Gray squirrel, gray squirrel, swish your bushy tail. Wrinkle up your little nose. Put a nut between your toes. Gray squirrel, gray squirrel, swish your bushy tail. Awesome. Okay, everybody can have a seat. So for everybody online and all of the adults, um, obviously you can see we've got, I know in my family we're three three generations of attending camp. Um, Camp brings kind of everybody together. We do a fall retreat up at Crystal. But the cost of camp is not something that is insignificant for many families. 
Something that our church and our region like to do is provide camp scholarships for kids who wouldn't be able to go otherwise. So if you have it in your budget or in your heart and you feel called, there is a special envelope in your bulletin this week for camp scholarships. You can also go online and donate and just designate that it's for camp scholarships. This ensures that all kids are able to go. Um, and then the other big plug, and you're welcome, Dirksen, is everybody needs to register for camp by the end of April in order to get the early bird discount. I did bring my computer today if anybody needs help to do that. Um, and if you do need a camp scholarship and need some instructions on how um, to manage that, you can come see me or Eli. So thank you. There's a lot of dates for camp, so there are little flyers out in the narthex. If you are interested in checking those out, there is family camp too. It's not just for kids. So check them out and see me near Eli or pretty much anybody here because we all have, a lot of us go to camp. So just let us know. Thank you, Danielle. And now to continue that celebration of celebrating um, the beauty of na and wonder of nature, we are going to now um, sing or play for you. You can sing along if you know the words, but you can remain seated. The earth is yours. <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted by screaming kids as I was trying to talk. <laughs> My brain went a little poof for a second there. <laughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs>
Our second scripture reading is Psalm 104, 7 through 15. At your rebuke, the waters bolted, felling at the sound of your thunder, cascading over the mountains, into the valleys, down to the reservoir you made for them. You imposed boundaries they must never cross, so they would never again flood the land. You set springs gushing in ravines, running down between the mountains, supplying water for wild animals, and attracting the thirsty wild donkeys. The birds of the air make their nests by these waters and sing among the branches. From your palace, you water the highlands until the ground is sated by the fruit of your work. You make fresh grass grow for cattle and plants for us to cultivate to get food from the soil, wine to cheer our hearts, oil to make our faces shine, and bread to sustain our life. Good morning. It's not only Camp Sunday. Tomorrow, if you didn't know, is Earth Day. So we're kind of got a theme going on here. Now, no matter how sophisticated we become, something in us reaches out for soil. We reach out for our roots, and it stirs within us this claim to a simpler, more basic way of life. We think of places with quaint names and country stores and main streets, one building deep. Despite the tremendous grow of urban city life in this nation, a whole host of Americans actually think of themselves, studies have shown, as essentially rural people who have just become a little city-fied. And because so many have become city-fied, they have gone to a city to earn a living and to pitch tents, at least for a while, they say. There stirs within their heart their longing for soil, that hunger to breathe clean air and to know the taste and smells of country life. We can see it every summer when 127 and 75 become jam-packed with cars and campers all flocking to northern Michigan's nature paradises. In fact, it's been this way for as long as we can remember. In the 18th century, French nobles sought to have the best of both worlds, and they built for themselves pretentious chateaus, not in the city, though. Not in Paris, where life was supposed to be dirty and complicated and mean, but out in the countryside, where they could pretend to just be simple farm folk and close to the soil. Further back than that, in the Middle Ages, when the monks built their monasteries, trying as best as they could to recreate the style of holy, simple living that they believed God had called them to, they went to the deserts, to the lonely places. And they built not only houses of prayer, but also vast farms in these areas. And more than that, they worked those farms themselves and gave themselves to prayer, to works of charity, and to a relationship of labor and love with the earth. You can go even further back than that. You can go back to the Old Testament, to that period in Israel's history when she was on her way to becoming a settled nation. And you can see how some of the earliest prophets, Samuel, for instance, and Elijah, they worried that as Israel settled into cities and concentrated her attention on these urban areas, rather than tilling soil and tending their flocks, that she would forget God. Maybe she would not remember that it was God who had led Israel forth as a wandering rural people with no home. The concern of the prophets, in a sense, was that Israel might no longer be in touch with the earth. There are expressions of the power and beauty of nature in the Bible all over. Our two scripture readings this morning I chose were some of my favorite examples. Psalm 104 describes the ways that all of creation belong to God. The psalmist there was inviting us to imagine the heart of nature, like a windy, frosty winter storm that praises God. It reminds us, if we need to be reminded, that nature can be powerful and dangerous, extreme and mysterious. 
the seas roar, mountains shake, predators are plentiful. Creation is wild and beautiful and sometimes dangerous and chaotic. The Old Testament generally saw nature as a force to be reckoned with and appreciated. And so it may come as no surprise to us that in our modern day, we also feel the need to appreciate the earth. And we deal, do a great deal to express that too. Like go to camp. Brought my camping water bottle. For example, 20th century Americans nowadays, we've created this strange new phenomenon called a suburb. In the suburbs, our goal is to create on a small scale something of country life, something of being in touch with the earth. See, we spend our Saturdays either coaxing our grass to grow or, if it does, cutting it down. And planting flowers here, tomatoes there, and cucumbers somewhere else. Why? Not just to kill time, surely, but because we often complain we don't have enough time. Not even just to create status symbols like the greenest grass or the flossiest flower bed. Because after all, all that would wear thin after a while. I think the reason that we grow and cut and plant is we want to spend, no, we need to spend time in touch with the earth. We need to go back, even if it's only in our imaginations, to the basics of human existence, to the soil, to the source of meaning, to the foundation of life itself. Hint, hint, Genesis. We need to be in touch with the earth because it means that we can be in touch with ourselves and with God. Why else would you look up at a skyscraper and discover up there, 40 stories up, a penthouse apartment complete with shrubs and trees hanging over the edges of the building? Because even in a space where everything is concrete and steel and city life, someone still has the urge to be in touch with the earth. And it's probably no accident that you and I feel just a little out of touch with those basics. Unless on occasion we dig our fingers into the dirt or run barefoot through a field. It's no accident because God created us for a kinship to all of that. And with more than a kinship too, we're created with responsibility for the earth. Listen to this verse from Genesis. Then God said... Let us make humankind in our image, to be like us. Let them be stewards of the fish in the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, the wild animals, and everything that crawls on the ground. This story of our creation in Genesis is saying that we have a responsibility to the earth. It is given us to have, that it is given us to have dominion over earth, and that, in effect, we have separated ourselves from something very basic if we neglect the care of the earth. It's put in a much, pic much more picturesque way in the second creation story in Genesis. And if you're just now learning that Genesis has two creation stories, then maybe we should talk about that or I'll write another sermon. But in that second creation story, it is said that God formed us of the dust of the earth and breathed into our nostrils the breath of life. We are that soil. We are that dust of the earth, a part of the material, the stuff of creation. And unless we recognize that, we've missed something in God's plan for us. Now, if you read the creation, the creation story carefully as well, I think we can discover that what it says is that we are both material and spiritual beings. Both material, physical stuff beings and spiritual. It speaks of people who are to have dominion over all the earth, who are themselves formed from the earth, physical, but it also paints our portraits as having been made in the image and likeness of the creator, spiritual. The 
problem is, I know for me, sometimes it's easy to lose track of one side or the other of that. Lots of the folks we encounter on the street every day are the ones that we imagine or that I imagine are just physical and not spiritual. They're concerned with satisfying the needs of the body and of themselves. They have no trouble with the idea that we are of the earth. They have forgotten, however, that they are made in the image of God. And then there's the other side, and it's equally short-sighted, the kind of Christian piety that only thinks in terms of being spiritual and wants to erase the reality of our physical natures. That's the kind of piety that talks about heaven all the time, way out in there in the ethereal, and they can't see that as a Christian now they have responsibility for the way life is going. It's a kind of Christian, Christian religion that claims that we don't have to take seriously what's happening now in politics, economics, nature, because all that's earthly, and we're destined for something more in the spiritual. But I tend to believe that if we read so much of the Bible carefully, we can see and understand that we are both spiritual and physical. We are made in the image of God, but we are also made of the earth. And in that, God calls us to be responsible for and in touch with the earth. This morning in a little bit, you and I will be invited to gather around this table. And on this table, which of course speaks to us of profound spiritual realities, you find physical things, material things, things of the earth. Bread made of grain born of the earth. One of the most basic of human foods from practically the beginning of time and juice or wine, the fruit of the vine, again, of the earth, taken from that which the Lord gave to man in the beginning and said, I have given you every plant, every tree for food. Bread and juice to bring us in touch with the earth. We can and should see the Lord's Supper as a spiritual meal. It's a symbolic meal that reminds us of the deep things of the spirit and a life poured out for our souls. But I think it also points to the relationship the Lord has given us to the things of the earth. It reminds us that however spiritual we are or become, we should never be far from this life and our responsi responsibility for it. So I'd urge us when we come to the table to not forget that there are those for whom we are responsible and have not enough at their tables. And we cannot arrive here at this table and forget that God also made us responsible as stewards over the things of this world, our resources and our material goods. The bread and juice can teach us that. nor can we suppose that our God is aloof from it all and not involved, that God somehow is concerned only with the timeless and the eternal. For at the table, when we come, we know and we remember that God was in Christ, in human flesh, on the earth, earthly, and God cares. God cares about all that we are. So each time we come to this table and these elements, we can see them and we can smell them, we can handle them, and we can taste them. And we can know that we are in touch again with the earth and we are therefore in touch with God, our creator who made us in their image but also made us caretakers of that earth. Amen. I think I brought that up with me. Ha ha. So now we are going to 
sing our hymn of prayer, which is Pass It On. Um, and if you would like to stand, embody your spirit, and sing with us. Hello. Ooh. It's a little taller than me. That's not unusual. Also, not having the podium is going to be really hard for me because I'm really clumsy. So um, it can be kind of a game for all those in the audience and also those online to watch how many times I might drop things or be searching for things in my hand. It can be like an interactive thing. I'm Shauna, I'm one of the elders here, and it occurred to me as Eli was speaking, some of you may not know him. <laughs> um, Eli is not just an elder here. You've seen him perform elder duties many times. He's also a pastoral student and often fills in for Pastor John. Um, and so we are so blessed that we have him and we love him so much and we're so glad. And we also have an amazing deacon in um, Danielle, and we're, we were very grateful to have her for the children's moment. So if you came in and was like, who is that? <laughs> it's only Danielle whom we love so much. Um, and by only, I don't mean to diminish her at all. Um, we've now come to a time of prayer. Um, for those of you who are here in person, you may not know, but past prayer requests are actually in the bulletin. Um, so if you... Uh, want to know what we were praying about last week or in previous weeks, <laughs> we, never, we never really forget them. We uh, keep adding them on um, and kind of keep track of the ongoing things. Um, so you can glance at those as you're praying too. Um, and at the end of our prayer, we have a moment of silence. So it's not a technical glitch. It is just a moment of silence. Um, and at the very end, we'll say the Lord's prayed prayer together, and whatever words 
feel most comfortable to you. And they will be on the screen if you're online or on the um, screen behind me if you're here in person. Um, so if you're like me and panic and immediately forget all the words to the Lord's Prayer as soon as someone says, say the Lord's Prayer, we've got your back. Let's take a moment for reverence. Dear Creator God and personal God, you created our world and everything in it. We struggle with both the extent of its majesty and the amount of responsibility we have toward it and you. We thank you, God, for our constant reminders of you and your power through the diversity of your, creature, your creations, both when we walk outside and in every human face we meet. We pray, Lord, for your wisdom and grace in learning how best to behold and take care of the people, creatures, and the world you have created. Help us to treat both the earth, ourselves, and each other gently as the precious sacred creations we are. Help us to make wise decisions and not selfish ones. Help us to see each other and your world with your eyes and not our own. Help us to place love first in all we do and say. Lead us and shepherd us into the ways you want us to go and to live with one another, always letting your examples of grace and love guide us. We praise you, God. We thank you, God. And we ask you to help us remember your plans for us as we bring these prayer requests for you. We pray, God, for those battling cancer and other serious illnesses. We pray for those who are struggling in their relationships with others and for families that feel at the end of their tethers. We pray you strengthen and comfort them. We pray for those in transitions and ending old chapters while starting new ones. We pray for the family of Carolyn Charles as they grieve their cousin that was almost like a sister and all the complications that grief can bring. And for Alizé, who is struggling with a health issue for which the usual remedy is not an option because surgery can't be done right now because of the state of her heart. Uh, from the Burtons, we have for the victims of two small children and injured survivors of a car crash into a birthday party yesterday in Monroe C County, Michigan. From Nicole, we have prayers for my family, Aunt Barb and cousins Jeff and Kevin after the passing of their husband father this past week after complications from a surgery. From Gary and Tamara, they pray, please keep our daughter Janae in, our pr in your prayers. God, keep your arms wrapped around her. We pray for her, Lord. From Danielle and Audrey, Audrey says, pray for my Papa Charlie. He is in rehab to get better. From Jill Dimmitt, prayers for the Blackmore family upon the death of Lynn. Keep her husband Josh and their children in your prayers. Lord, we also take a moment now for silence to lift up the things that are weighing on our hearts for which there are no words or no way to express them publicly, but that you already know so well. We know that it is all in your hands and we remind ourselves of that by bringing them to you. We now pray together using whatever words are most comforting to us, either the ones on the screen behind me or the ones we memorized long ago, the prayer your son taught us. Our creator who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For our final song, you can sit both in body and in spirit. And it is not in the hymnal, <laughs> as most of the other songs have been up. Well, then, 
520, thank you. It's not in the bulletin, so I thought maybe you were doing a version that wasn't in the hymnal, so I was like, okay. Okay, so you can look in the hymnal. It's number 528, um, and it's the song Give Thanks. God, it was me. I was like, where is John? What is he doing on his job? Okay, sorry. Yep. I'm with it, really. Thanks. Uh, many of us have similar Sunday morning routines. They include tasks that we hardly think about. There's so much of a habit, we don't want to give them up. We turn on all the lights when we get up. We take a long, hot shower. We eat a nice, meaty, hearty breakfast. We drive our cars to church. We use our paper bulletins and notes. I'm guilty as well. Um, paper napkins and disposable coffee cups in our, during our fellowship time. And the list could go on. But the reason I bring, is up, bring it up is because it's important to remember that our actions, these actions, impact people and places around the world often contributing to environmental degradation, climate change, floating trash islands, poverty, and even chronic illnesses. We can help bring healing to God's people and God's earth by examining our routines and changing our habits to live more simply and sustainably. In doing so, we respond to Jesus' call to feed the hungry give water to the thirsty, and care for the sick. So today, as we come to the table to eat this meal, let us think on the verse from Galatians 6, 9 through 10, that says, And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone. Because God hasn't given up on any of us in the face of all the pain and hurt in the world. And Jesus didn't give up on the people even in the face of his death. Even as he was eating with one who would betray him and another who would deny him, he showed grace 
in offering a meal of simplicity, but brought forth from the beauty of God's creation. He took bread from seeds sown into the earth and grown to feed and nourish us, and he broke it and said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he also took the cup of wine from grapes grown ripe and sweet on the vine. And he passed the cup saying, take and drink. This is my blood poured out for you. Do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Dear God, we come before you humbled and grateful that you've welcomed us to your table. We are grateful for the symbol of the bread that reminds us that we rely on you and your creations for sustenance and strength. We are thankful for your guidance and also for the stewardship of people in our community like Kelly and also like my friend Sean, who's the head of MSU Recycling, who helps us to hopefully learn how to make better choices with our stewardship than we would on our own. We are grateful for the symbol of the cup, which symbolizes the sacrifice made for us long ago and daily, and how we must be willing to make sacrifice ourselves to make, your crea make sure your creation is cared for and your people know that they are loved. Thank you for this moment of communion together with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
couple announcements, and one is from my friend Doug. <laughs> that truth, it is Camp Sunday. <laughs> this Saturday, April 27th, is Rebuilding Together Tri-County Day. We have a house assignment. It's at 113 West Willow Street uh, here in Lansing. Uh, there's a bulletin out there with the items to be, work items to be done. Rebuild a set of steps, paint, strip and paint a porch, install a eaves trough section. Uh, we're gonna start work. I want you to report about 8.30 if you're gonna. If you have an old Rebuilding Together shirt, wear that. Uh, uh, just bring work gloves, work gloves and work clothes. Let me know, please, if you're going to show up so we can, we can be prepared. So thank you. Thanks, Doug. Um, somebody mentioned, I think uh, Shauna mentioned the bulletin inserts already, but there is a lot of stuff about camp on it, hence it being Camp Sunday. Um, there are some reminders about, um, there's a Camp Crystal weekend, come, Camp Cleanup weekend coming up at the beginning of May, and I'd love a group of people to come with us. Um, free lodging, free meals, if you wanna go help clean up around camp, move some swings, rake some stuff, wipe down beds, I don't know. There's all kinds, all abilities. Any ability, there's stuff to do. Uh, the link for learning about camp and registering, seeing dates, there's lots of different programs. We tend to emphasize the youth programs, elementary, high school, middle school, but there are women's weekends, men's weekends. There's two different opportunities for family camps now. Um, there's a young adults weekend. Uh, there are a lot of things, so please check that out. And um, we're doing something different this year. We're having an open house at camp and a pig roast. Um, there, it is free to attend. There'll be live music, uh, literally a pig roast. There'll be tours of camp. There'll be opportunities to climb the wall and do the high ropes course. There'll be crafts, a kids area. It is from on June 1st from 10 to 3. Um, if you are uh, available, they are still looking for some volunteers to help out with it, with it as well. So you can go and just attend and enjoy camp some. Or if you're interested, there are a lot of different opportunities to help out at camp as a volunteer. Yes. Just to clarify, a family camp is for singles, couples, couples with small children, yes. couples with old children, couples with adult children. In any way. Couples that are no longer couples. In yeah. any way you define your family. And yes, it's actually the name family for family camp came from God's family, not you as a family. So, and there's two now. There's the traditional, what we've had is, um, oh my gosh, there's family camp. I cannot remember. There's a full name for it, but Family camp is what everybody calls it. And now we've added a second one because that one was so popular and there were people that couldn't quite do that week-long one. So there is a long weekend one called Beloved Community Camp. Um, so depending on your style, there's options, options. And also, if you don't want to do any of that and you're more of an introverted, solitary person, you can always just rent a building at camp. You can call up camp and get a hold of them and a lot of the lodges and buildings are for rent. Um, the other thing I wanted to let you know is out on the sign-up bulletin board or sign-up board that we've had out there for a while. Don't forget loaves and fishes and um, coffee fellowship sign-up. But we have added today, or I have added today, a summer music sign-up. Our praise band, as much as we love them, does need a break in the summertime. Um, and their last Sunday is May 19th. I think I counted my days right. So starting Sunday, May 26th, we will accept um, special music. We do ask that you give us about a month's notice in case there are needs that um, music needs to attend to as far as getting that going for you. Um, so I will be blacking out dates as we go along that aren't available anymore because we don't have notice. But there is a sign up for that. So if you think that later in the month you are interested in sharing your music, whatever it is with us, there's an opportunity. So please do. And I forgot I have to say goodbye to you. I closed my goodbye. So now, go out into the wonderful and mysterious world. Go and behold the beauty that is all around us. Let ourselves be blown by the wild wind. Hear the birds. Listen to the music of the ages. And know that the Holy Spirit is in you and with you. Amen. 
able and join us in singing our final song, Shine, Jesus, Shine. One, two, three, four.